This is my new PCB that I've made. It is very small, could be programmed with the Arduino and it has a radio connection using the Anorev 24 radio module. This is a radio receiver PCB compatible with my past tutorial of the Arduino based radio controller, so in order to make this PCB please watch the other video as well. This PCB will receive the values from the same radio controller from the other video and be able to control 5 outputs. In this case we have 4 outputs that will have an H-bridge control, so we could control motors and other actuators in both directions and also control the speed and the last output will be a MOSFET output, so we could control a motor just in one direction. The board is very small so we could use it with very lightweight RC planes, small RC toy cars and more. Once you have the received data you could use this with any RC project that you want. So let's see how I've made it, what components we have on this PCB and what we could do with it. Also make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons as well. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the PCB for this tutorial. You will also need the Arduino based radio controller as well, so check the video, the schematic and the code for that tutorial below in the description. So what could this new PCB do? First of all we could program this with the Arduino IDE using this kind of FTDI programmer. So if you know how to use the Arduino you could use this board as well. Next we have this SMD version of the Anorev 24 radio module the same module that the Arduino based radio controller has, so these two will be compatible. So I received the channel values from the radio controller and in the code I could then control some outputs. 8 pins from the Atmega chip are connected at the input of two 8 bridges ICs, these two chips here. And another output will be connected at these pads here and this is the output from a single MOSFET, so we could control the power in only one direction. Before I explain what these H bridges will do and show you some examples of how you could use this board, let me show you how to order it. You have the Gerbil files for this PCB below this video. The PCB was made by the sponsor of this video, GLC PCB. So you have to go to their website and then click the code now button. Then you have to upload the Gerber zip file on this page. Once uploaded you can see the Gerber file and select some settings such as thickness, the color of your PCB and the amount of PCBs that you want. In my case I want 5 PCBs and the red color for the solder mask. Now click checkout and insert your shipping data, so for only 2 dollars plus 6 more dollars for shipping I can get my PCBs from GLC PCB. The shipping process to Spain is around 10 days and that might change depending on where you live and the shipping service that you select. Ok so now that I received the boards and tested them, let me explain you how they work. So first of all what will an H bridge do? Using this IC we could control the speed and the direction of rotation of a DC motor. Remember that we have two ICs, each one with two H bridges, so we could control the speed and rotation of four DC motors. For the first example I connect some DC motors with a simple gearbox at the outputs of the first H bridge. Now I upload a test code compatible with the radio transmitter and as you can see I can control the direction and the speed of the motors using the radio controller. So using this small PCB you could make your own RC car. Each output of the H bridge is rated with a current value of maximum 1.5 amps, so you can't use this with huge motors. But using small motors, especially with a gearbox, will be very easy to use. The speed will be controlled with the PWM signal applied to the input of the H bridge. So imagine creating a simple RC car using this small radio receiver board with an already built in H bridge circuit. But I had another idea. Instead of using DC motors, I found this small actuator coil. This small component has a magnet inside and a coil around it and by changing the polarity of the voltage applied to the coil we can move the actuator left and right. That's why on the PCB you can see the names for AL, EL, AR and RR because those are the names for the left and right ailerons, elevator and rudder. So my plan is to make a radio control paper plane in the future using these small actuators for controls and this small PCB in order to keep it very lightweight. That's why I have on the PCB 4 outputs and one more simple output for a DC motor. 
I want to use this kind of coreless micro DC motor with a propeller in order to create some thrust and then use the coil actuators for controls. Now this actuator is a bit expensive, so I tried to make one myself. Using a resin 3D printer, I was able to create two actuators. These are a little bit big, but I'm working on some smaller ones. On the inside part we have to place two small neodymium magnets with super glue. On the outside I will use some very thin enamel copper wire and create a coil. Make sure that the resistance is higher than 5 or 6 ohms, otherwise a huge current will pass and reset the board each time. So now I have my own coil actuator. So using the H-bridge I can control the polarity applied to this coil and by that I can move it to the left or to the right. I connect the DC motor to the M plus and M minus output pads, and then I connect the coil actuators to the aileron left and right pads. I upload another test code and as you can see, I can control the DC motor with the throttle joystick. Then by moving the roll joystick I can move the ailerons left and right. I won't make the paper plane for now in this video, because I still need some components. I just wanted to show you the new PCB and some examples of how to use it. Now the problem with these actuators is that for now I couldn't find a good filter for the PWM signal in order to control the movement in an analog way. In this right moment all I can do is to move it fully to the left or fully to the right and if I try using PWM signals as in case of the motors, the actuator will vibrate a lot. Somehow I was able to control the movement slowly as you can see here right now by changing the PWM frequency of the signal, but I'm not yet satisfied with the results. So if you know a good and simple filter circuit to control these actuators in a precise way, please comment below, I would appreciate that. The coil has some decent power. I can feel the pushing force with my hand, as you can see right now, and if I push it, it will come back to its position. Anyway, this is just an idea for now. I still have to make a lot of tests and create a micro paper plane. Of course, at this output you could add any other component that you want, such as LEDs, different kind of motors, buzzers and even servos. For example, for my 3D printed Spitfire plane and the Yak plane as well, I need 4 servos and an ESC in order to control the entire plane. So instead of placing the coil actuators or directly the brush DC motors, you could place some servos at these 4 outputs and an ESC at the single motor output. But of course, a servo needs 3 pads. Ground, VCC and Signal. So I should add a few more pads to this PCB. The board that I have now doesn't have these extra pads, but I will add those in the Gerber file that you could download from below. But for now using some wires I've made the connections to some servos, and as you can see I could control all of them using the radio controller, so you could easily make an RC plane with this PCB. You could add 4 servos and 1 ESC to this board, and usually normal RC planes only need that in order to be able to control it. So with the combination between these two projects of the radio controller and the receiver board, it will be very useful for any radio control project. I don't know for sure the range of this board with the NREF24 radio module, because I haven't made those kind of tests yet. For the radio module I've also used a new type of voltage regulation that I haven't used till now with these modules. And that is placing a diode for the 3.3 volts. The battery voltage is usually 3.7 to 4.2 volts. The diode voltage drop will be around 0.6 volts, so that will give me around 3.3 up to 3.5 volts for the radio module and that should be pretty good. I hope I won't have any problems with this in the future. Also that means that you could only supply this board with a 4.2 volts LiPo battery. A higher voltage might damage the radio module. The rest of the PCB is quite simple. Some resistors, capacitors and some small diodes for the H-bridges I see, the MOSFET for the motor with the pull down, some other decoupling capacitors, the Atmega microcontroller and the Unref24 radio module. You have a list with all the components for this project and the PCB below this video. You also have the transmitter tutorial and some receiver codes example for controlling motors and so on. Have in mind that the Gerber file that you will download below will also have the pads for the servo motors. On the board you will also see these 5 pads for the wired communication. Here you have to solder this FTDI programmer for the pins of ground, VCC, RX and TX and DTR pins. Make sure that you put the programmer in the 3.3V mode if you have the NRF24 radio module soldered to the PCB, otherwise with 5V you might burn the module. 
connect the USB cable, select the Arduino Nano as a board and upload the code. The LiPo battery will be connected on these two connections here, where you have the plus and the minus names for the pads. So that's pretty much it for this tiny PCB. If you want to make an RC plane, maybe a small RC toy car, or stay tuned for my paper plane project, you could use this small radio receiver if you want. You could control motors, LEDs, servo motors, call actuators, maybe some relays or other compatible modules that you want to connect that will also work at 4.2 volts from the LiPo battery. When I will finish the paper plane project, I will make another video, so don't worry. I still have to improve the small 3D printed call actuators. I hope that this small PCB project will help you with your own projects. Use the radio transmitter from the other tutorial and create a fully Arduino based radio control device. If you like this project, give a like to this video and consider subscribing. Make sure you also activate the notification bell in order to see my future videos. I recommend you to also check my new website for creators. Create an account and start posting your own tutorials and by that you can help other creators or show your work to others. Links are below for everything. Also a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. So thanks again and see you later guys.